Um, I am going to take you on a journey of imagination. Uh, what I, I need you to do is think about a world where we no longer move waste, uh, where we're talking about distributed power and distributed waste management, anywhere in the world, anywhere that your imagination takes it. So we started in the New Forest. The New Forest has one thing. It has a lot of uh, horses and a lot of wild horses. And with wild horses, we get manure. If you look at that manure, well, we looked at it and said, what in the world can you do with this? This is ridiculous to have this much manure piling up. What can we do with it? Let's, let's think about converting it. We had a background in renewable energy. So we said, well, how can we convert it into energy? How can we, why do you need to move it? Because it's currently being collected and moved off sites because of the runoff that comes from it. So we looked at that and we said, there's one source. What other sources of waste are there out there? And we looked at food waste. Food waste in the world, there is a tremendous amount of. It's collected. It's moved mainly to landfill, mainly um, to landfills like that, where it's piled up in municipal solid waste dumps. Some of it is starting to be converted into electricity. The electricity where it is being converted is being taken back via a grid. We looked at that. We said, well, the grid is great, but if we want to really make an impact, we need to stay out of the grid. We need to be independent of the infrastructure bills that governments are in charge of so that we can not be reliant on that structure. So we said, waste is a raw material in the right place. The Germans say waste is a raw material that is just in the wrong place. We believe it's a raw material in the right place. And if you imagine a world without these dumps, without the transport, without the grid, then you start to imagine the world that we wanted to impact. So we looked at how much waste is there. And you can say food waste, or like Sanergy, you can look at septic waste. You can look at animal manures. But we've concentrated initially on the food waste sector. And there is a tremendous amount of it globally. There's 3.6 billion tons of it generated annually. And if you convert that into energy, you're converting 31% of the power used in the US. That's a huge number. So you take that power and you look at the carbon offsets, because we all went to the tour, the JPL tour yesterday, and we saw the impact of carbon and carbon um, issues. And we saw the climate change issues that are happening. And that will create an offset of 61 million cars. So that's great. That's fantastic. But actually, most of that conversion is slated to happen in a centralized way, in big anaerobic digesters, in big gasification plants, in big pyrolysis plants. What we're suggesting is eliminate the movement. Start to think, what would the world be like if we actually just didn't move our waste? If we didn't move it, how far do we actually move waste? Does anybody have an idea? I do. I looked it up. We move it 1.5 million times to the moon and back. And since we saw the uh, Mars uh, landing equipment yesterday in all its glory, um, we uh, looked at that and we said it's 10,000 times to Mars and back every year, is how far we are moving that waste around. And that's not including the septic waste. It's not including the animal manures that are being transported. So we are wasting a tremendous amount of fuel 25% of the global production of fuel goes to movement of waste, of food waste. We're not even counting the septic waste. That's a huge impact on global warming. That's a huge impact on the carbon. So take our system, look at the carbon offsets that come from decentralizing it. So we said, well, we think we're on to something. Let's call it a muckbuster. Let's figure out how to put it in a package. Let's put it in a package that's sustainable, that's portable, that will work anywhere in the world. Not the package you imagined? OK, well, we said, well, maybe we need to lose the cow. So we moved on. We looked around at what else was out there. We looked at the units that are available in the household world in India and China. They're available. There are tens of thousands of them that are scattered around. The problem with those is that they don't have the health and safety requirements to be globally dis distributed. They don't have any kind of storage capacity. So it's a use as it's created. And they haven't got any odor control. And there's no pathogen uh, management in that. 
The small centralized system, again, it's a, it's a localized build. It's not something that can be globally manufactured, and we wanted something a little bit different. So we created the Muckbuster. It's our design. We contract manufacture it. It can be scaled globally. The, the manufacturing can be put anywhere in the world. You can localize 70% of this build to the local community, and you can deploy them. You can manage them remotely. Um, they can be anywhere. They can be in Synergy's areas, taking the septic waste. Instead of the million pounds, this unit costs 100,000. So um, what can you do with it? Well, it gets delivered by truck, gets offloaded, it's ready to go. You put your waste in, you get biogas, fertilizer, and compost out of the unit. You, your need changes, you need to move it, you pick it up, you move it someplace else. Disaster recovery, portability, that was what we wanted to package. That's what we've patented. Microgrid, what are we creating? We're creating your microgrid for all of your environments. You're taking your waste, you're putting it in. It can be septic waste, it can be manures. It all goes into the same system. You get that microgrid, you start to not move the waste at all. It can sit behind this building, it can sit behind your hotel, it can sit in a supermarket. We have one in an office park. Um, it's taking the food waste from the hotel that's on the site, and it's taking the grounds waste from the office park. Um, it's a simple system. We convert the gas because that's what we need to do. We convert it into electricity. We power one of the office buildings. We don't provide all of the power, but what we've done is eliminate the movement of waste. There is no longer a waste collection happening on this site. We won the best AD solution from the UK Anaerobic Digestion and Biogas Association this year for this installation. Who can we serve? We can serve anybody, uh, anybody that has waste, and pretty much everybody in this room has waste. Um, large corporate, small corporate, schools, governments, everybody has waste. We can convert it anywhere. We can put our unit behind any building. Our team, our team has an enormous amount of experience. We have over 20 years, probably 30 years in some cases, of experience growing businesses. We've taken them from startup all the way through to publicly traded company. We've worked in the waste sector. We've worked in a variety of environments. We've done uh, taking product all the way through from concept through production out and successfully delivered into a customer site. And we have an inventor who is um, very visionary and has loads of other solutions to tack on to this, but right now he's been told to focus. <laughs> so um, so we, have, we have this idea, we've got it to where we are. Um, we've done the market research and really the key to this was we started with market. My background is launching new product into new market. The first thing I said is let's go out and take a look if there's a market for this. Great, there's a market. What can we sell the unit at? Okay, great. Now we have the price for the build. We have the uh, functionality that needs to go into the unit. We have the design concept of the unit, and it's based on a product that will be able to go into the market. So we then took that and did the engineering design behind the product. We did the patent filing alongside that. Our patents have just issued, and they're around the portability and the package of the unit. So what we've done is gone from mainframe computer down to laptop. Um, and these are the people that we're working with. We have three installations, so we're not huge yet, um, but all of the rest of these sites are either in process or already committed to us. Leclerc, one of the biggest supermarket chains in France. Um, Sparshalt, the, one of the leading agricultural colleges in the UK. Uh, the Smithsonian, the National Zoo, we're on a bid to put one in to handle the manure from the animals. Um, uh, Luxembourg is looking at having them in the government there. So it gives you a little bit of a broad range. Top one, Emotion Energy is dealing with a brewery. Um, they've just put one in on one of their brewery clients, and we have another large brewery waste management company that we're working with. I'm under non-disclosure on some of them, so I'm a little bit, um, those aren't non-disclosed, but some of the other customers that we're working with, I can't really tell you about yet. Um, so what, how do we grow this business? We scale it exactly the way we set out to start the business. We've set up all of the structure already. We have a manufacturing partner who's capable of scaling with us. They, are, they have two plants. They do Boeing work now. Um, they're perfectly capable of building our units. But we also scale that by replicating that in the various countries and bringing it into line with the country needs and the country pricing needs. Uh, we continue to do this, the design in-house. We do the supply chain work. Um, tying our supply chain into our units 
to protect ourselves as we go forward. So where we've modified supply chain components, that's how we're, we are also helping to secure our place in the marketplace. Um, we do both direct and channel sales. We have an active training program uh, developed by a company that trains for rail track. Our customers fly in, our partners fly in, they get trained by us, they do three days of hands-on management, commissioning, selling, uh, maintaining of our unit, and then they fly back out and they're ready to go. Um, we're active right now in the UK. We have a French partner who uh, insisted on starting us up there, and I've um, got a, hopefully, a unit going in here in California um, that's being federally funded, uh, going on to one of the Indian reservations in September. Um, so my world, well, what my world, with a muckbuster everywhere I go, I have breakfast in the morning, it comes uh, a croissant, yoo-hoo, because I'm French. Uh, I buy it from my local supermarket that has a muckbuster behind it. Not yet, but it should. Um, I go to the office park and the grounds waste and the food waste from the office park goes into the muckbuster. I pick my child up from the school. The school is running on a muckbuster. It's taking its grounds waste and its septic waste because it's not in a, in a city environment. And it's putting into, into a muckbuster, giving it more, more money to spend on other things, on educational materials. I take the dog for a walk. I pick up the, the poo, I put it in the muckbuster in, in the local park receptacle, and that's going into producing the lighting in my neighborhood park. I go out for the awards dinner, I get to hold the Olympic torch, um, and behind me the lights are powered by the muckbuster that's sitting in the back of the hotel, taking the catering waste from that evening's event. What's your world? Where can you put a muckbuster? In a village? On a planet? in a spaceship, on a boat. Um, it can go pretty much anywhere. So what do we need? We need you helping us to convert our pipeline, helping us to get people to think outside the box, because everybody's so used to having their waste collected, it's very, very difficult for them to think outside. Thank you very much. <laughs>